yes it is a bluetooth printer and the message of your choice of course it can be printed via bluetooth no it cannot be used for any professional work but you can have fun with this project and which can be a wonderful thing first i created a 3d model for this project and it took me a while to create this 3d model because my project will never be complete if there is a small mistake this 3D printed part has a special role in this project. Inside in this 3D part, I insert a neodymium magnet and after then I close the top lid. And with that, I am going to use an electromagnet here. And after then, I will place the neodymium 3D printed part on the top of this electromagnet. And then whenever I give at least 12 volt to this electromagnet, and you can see the neodymium 3D printed part will jump. And that's what I need. Next, you need a 28 BYZ48 stepper motor as a Y axis which I will attach with my 3D printed roller. And after then I will connect all the hand to this servo. And those hand will move on the X axis in the same parallel. Ok, our mechanical project is over. And I used AC05 for Bluetooth communication. And next as a motor driver I have used ULN 2003 IC here. I have downloaded a serial Bluetooth application here to run via Bluetooth. And after then I will connect my specific Bluetooth in this software. Then I will type a message hello world and as soon as I send it and see it is starting printing on my printer. This printer is working very well. Ok now time to let's see how the picture quality of this projector. Here you can see the lights are not completely turned off in my room. So night lamp are running and see the picture quality. Fairly ok but not as good as I expected. I told you the reason first and I hope you remember I told you the reason first and see the picture quality. The projector has now produced 110 inch display that is very sharp and solid. If you turn on a 40 watt LED tube light it look a bit like this and if you turn the light off it's really bright you will feel like you are watching LED TV. Okay, finally, this is my tablet's display, but even with this display, it is still not possible to make a projector. This display has to be opened to collect the LCD panel. Okay, so be it. That's fine. And finally, here you can see this is my final LCD panel in which the image is created, which is intense light in our projector will pass through this LCD. But there are some problem here too. If you look closely, then you can see there is a black polarizer on this LCD panel. Its function is to make the pixel visible. And due to the polarizer, the light cannot pass easily. But commercial projectors do not have a such a dark polarizer. So our projector may not be very bright. Ultimately, this is our lens system. Here I use 4 nut and bolt so that I can adjust the focus of my lens as I want. Here I will use a mirror which I will place at 45 degree angle because all images will go through this mirror into my lens. Okay guys, let's check out the end result. Told you what to chase, told you how to run the race. Every move was on the page, but I didn't like their way. Had to fight and misbehave, had to find a way to change, had to leave to find my way. Caught up in a daydream, I be my mind up there almost daily. It's how I pass time, no opinions safely. It's how I understand what I want in this place. See, cause everybody wanna tell you bad things. What could go wrong? What fame brings, but success is a finicky thing. And if you ain't sure, no, it'll never be. I don't wanna let myself down myself.
You can make a video transmitter in very easiest way. It is as simple as building an FM transmitter. The only difference between them is that the FM transmitter transmits sound wave and my transmitter transmits the analog video signal. So that is why the most reliable signal for this is the TV signal. For properly make it, I must have a copper dot board to make it and I will cut it as per my requirement. And then I will put the female socket of the power supply inside this copper dot board. And then here I need a 470 ohms potentiometer which will be control the video signal. You can use here 100 ohms potentiometer if you want to run this transmitter in 3.7 volt. And definitely then we need a transistor. I will use the 2N222 transistor here which is enough to work inside this frequency. You can see here, here is an LC circuit which is being done by a coil and capacitor. And I hope you know guys as we can saw in the previous video when making the FM receiver. Here I am using 0.85 mm copper wire to make this coil. This is also known 24WG copper wire. And I will use my 5mm screwdriver here to make this coil in which we have to twist this copper wire 3 times. And see your coil is made, it was very easy, am I right? And after then I connected the 22 PF capacitor to the coil to complete the LC circuit. Ok, our circuit is completed. But now is the time to check that it is working properly or not. And see the video being transmitted correctly here. Hope you can understand. Now just we need a video signal for this input signal. And I hope I can transmit the video properly. Here I have chosen an analog video signal camera and from this camera you will get video signal and audio signal. And as you can see I put the camera very nicely in this cover dot board and then it's time to do final test. And you can see guys my transmitter is working properly even my camera is working very well. Multu is not a bad farmer, but if you want to make a drone with this, then definitely you should have a lot of knowledge about PID. So I connect this battery with my drone. And you can see this is not stable in a roll side. So I trim the roll side, test it again and see now this is not stable for pitch side. And after that I trim the lot of way but I am totally disappointed. This is not fly right way. After then I analyze in very deeply and realize my drone frame is not good. This is little bit flexible. So I remove every part from my drone body and I order a new commercial drone frame to see why this is not fly. You can see this is my drone frame. Let's mount everything. I don't show you here how much travel I had when I was make it. But I am giving you the correct PID value. But, but guys, but guys, once if you are calibrate its pitch roll and yeah value in right way, then you can use my pitch value. Then you can create it yourself if you are using same frame. Okay, everything is mounted. Now time to test it again. So at the end, I success to fly my multi drone. So this is the very joyful for me. Here you can see my inverter is ready. Now time to functionally check for this inverter. Okay, let's check this out. You can see I turn on this inverter. At first when you turn on this inverter, you, you heard a long beep until the boot up. And after that, if your voltage is very critically low like me, then the beep is continue. Yeah, you can see my inverter is showing me battery voltage is 5 volt. That means this inverter is not turned on anymore. So that is why everything will be showing me zero. But MOSFET temperature will be showing me here 25 degree. Even the battery condition showing me here extremely low condition. Now I am increase my power supply voltage 5 to 12. And here you can see in my display battery voltage showing me 12. Even the current consuming showing me. With that even how much watt will be generate that also showing me. 
the output AC voltage even the final MOSFET temperature. Even you can see here the battery state is showing me fully battery. For the first load test here I am going to use a 60 watt filament lamp. So I connect this lamp with this inverter and see my light is glowing very bright. Even the AC voltage is also stable. But the MOSFET temperature will be little increase. So don't worry about that because this system has thermal protection to cool this whole inverter. When the temperature will be 45 degrees, the fan automatically turn on. So overall here you can see everything is working very well. But uh, what about the induction fan? Okay, here I arrange a old 60 watt induction fan. I want to connect this inverter in this way. Next I turn on my inverter again. That means the power is ready. So I turn on this fan and here you go. See the fan is run very well as I expected. So as overall last I will tell you this inverter is a very successful project, at least for me. I wrote a new code and after another and lot of time consuming process. Sometime my clock start rotating like crazy, sometime it did not work at all. Yeah this is quite look like analog clock but uh, the millisecond will be little tolerance but you can make in this way a very great wall clock I mean a table clock and guys if you have not any 3d printer then definitely you can use my trick in this way I am just joking this is not possible I am pretty sure even you might be thinking why I am using this motor the only one reason is this motor ratio is a very great resolution compared to NEMA 17. Okay, now I can mount my motor on this acrylic glass. In the same way I mount minute motor even second motor. So finally in my clock I add an hour hand and next I add a black colored minute hand. And last this is the second hand. Okay, let's check this out. Is my clock showing me the correct time or not? So that is why I am using my own wristwatch. And here you can see exactly the same. Maybe my clock has a little bit tolerance but, but I would not understand if I don't use it for a while.